In this video, we're going to explore the parametric plots of these interesting curves called Lisa Zhu figures. And we're starting out with an example that's a review. It's not a Lisa Zhu figure. It's actually simpler than that. I have x of t equals cosine t, y of t equals sine t. Those are the parametric equations for the unit circle. So there's our old friend, the unit circle. And the reason I brought this in is because we can understand Lisa Zhu figures by thinking of them as modifications of the unit circle. So the way I look at the unit circle is to say, OK, my x coordinate is oscillating. It's going through a complete oscillation as t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So it goes all the way from the starting value of 1, then to negative 1, and then back to 1. At the same time, my y coordinate is oscillating through a full oscillation as t goes from 0 to 2 pi. It starts at 0, rises to 1, falls all the way to negative 1, and goes back to 0. So if you have exactly one oscillation of the x-coordinate combined with exactly one oscillation of the y-coordinate, that just traces out a circle. In example two, we start to mess with this. My equation for x is the same, but my equation for y, I've cut the period in half. In other words, this is oscillating twice as fast, and by the time t is equal to 2 pi, the y-coordinate has gone through two complete oscillations up and down, while the x-coordinate has only gone through one oscillation. In other words, we doubled the vertical wiggling. And what does this look like when we plot it? And there it is. It's our first Lisa Zhu figure. And we're asked to substitute in a couple values of t to determine the directionality. Um, I didn't do that on the unit circle. But if you plug in t equals 0, you'd start there. t equals pi over 2 puts you here. So I know as t increases, I'm tracing this thing out counterclockwise. What about the figure in example 2? If I plug in t equals 0 x is going to be 1, cosine of 0, and y is going to be 0, the sine of 0. So I start here. And then I'm going to try to find just the nearby point in the increasing direction for t. So I'm going to actually plug in pi over 4 here. x would be the cosine of pi over 4, which is 1 over root 2. And y would be the sine of pi over 2, because it has that extra 2 in its argument. And that would be 1. So I actually see that point right here. I could keep going, just one more anyway, and say, why don't we look at t equals pi over 2? Well, x would be 0, because the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And then y would also be 0, because the sine of twice pi over 2 is the sine of pi. So that gets me to here. I'm crossing through the origin for the first time at t equals pi over 2. All right, so the directionality of the curve is like this. It's going to trace out like this, cross back through the origin before it completes that cycle of 2 pi. Example 3. Again, I have the x-coordinate going through exactly one oscillation. In the same amount of time, it takes the y-coordinate to go through five oscillations. So I have shrank the period by a factor of 5 by just putting that little coefficient of 5 in there. All right, so my y-coordinate wiggles five times every time the x-coordinate wiggles once. What does that look like? So as we expected, that's a lot of wiggling. And if I plug in some points explicitly here, I could plug in t equals 0. And I end up with x equals 1 and y equals 0. So again, I'm starting right here. And then I want to choose a nearby point to avoid any confusion. And again, I want the y-coordinate to come out to 1 here. I'm actually I'm going for this point right here, hopefully. So I want 5t to be equal to pi over 2. In other words, I want to plug in t equals pi over 10. When I do that, I get the x is the cosine of pi over 10. So the cosine of a pretty small angle gives me a number pretty close to 1, but a little bit less than that. It doesn't matter specifically what it is. And my y value is going to be the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So I have this very tiny time increment here from 0 to pi over 10, and that's my next point. So I know the curve is being traced this way. Now, as you watch these things traced out, it does happen smoothly like this, where you'd go down here, and then I just keep making a smooth line up here. And over here, I'm headed down by the time I end up on the left side, and then I sweep upward. and eventually complete the entire thing after I get to t equals 2 pi. 
Finally, in example four, I want to investigate what happens if I turn up the wiggling on X, but leave Y alone. So Y is going to have exactly one oscillation, while X has three oscillations. And that's what that looks like. Lots of X wiggling, very little Y wiggling. And if I plug in a few special points to get the directionality, T equals zero is always easy. And I get that X is the cosine of zero, which is one, and Y is the sine of zero which is zero. So I'm starting here again. And then I'll plug in some other convenient point. I want to make that relatively small so it's, un so it's unambiguous which direction I'm going. So let's see if we can get the argument of the cosine to come out to pi over 2. So 3t equals pi over 2. That means t equals pi over 6 would get the job done. I get that x is the cosine of pi over 2, which is zero. And then y would be the sine of pi over 6, which happens to be a special angle and comes out to 1 half. So that's happening right here. And it means the curve is being traced out this way. So I loop around like this. I come back down this way. A nice continuous motion. Come down this way and back up to my starting point. That's how the thing is actually produced as t goes from 0 to 2 pi.